Hey everyone, uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about HO52, HO72 uh, axle or differential carriers. Um, they call them carriers because they carry the ring gear, as you can see right there. Uh, they have a couple bearings on them. Uh, the factory ones were barrel bearings, and the ones which are uh, shown on the right there, and on the left are the replacement taper bearings, which in my opinion are probably better for the application. Uh, one of the things uh, I want to point out is that there is no difference in the carriers from gear ratio 514 to 410. What we're looking at right here is a 410 ring gear on the left and a 514 on the right. And what I wanted to point out is the critical dish, uh, uh, dimension is from the bearing journal to the back of the ring gear. And as you can see, they are pretty close. I mean, it, it, it may be off a little bit, but you can also see that we're not really standing on a uh, tightly toleranced um, feature. We're standing on the end of the bearing uh, journal, which is not controlled. It's actually the distance from, obviously, the shoulder right here to the mounting surface of the ring gear. Anyway, they're pretty damn close, as you can see. 410, look how thin it is. You guys that keep asking for, you know, 390 gears or whatever, the reason why GM didn't make very many is because of that reason right there. Otherwise, they would have had to come up with a different carrier. And if they did that, then they'd have to come up with a different ring gear blank, right? So you see how thin it is? 410, 514. And the reason why this gets thicker is because the pinion gets fewer teeth than this guy, right? So more teeth, larger diameter on the pinion, you have to move the whole ring gear over. And this is as far as you can go, otherwise you start getting into your, your, uh, your cross uh, that your gears, spider gear, would normally mount on. All right, so let's take a look at the top. This is a 514, uh, which I took out of the donating axle and put on my original carrier. I decided to keep the carriers matched to the gears so that they would not have any wear pattern problems down the road because, you know, these, I'm not making any more of these things and I'd hate to show, have some, you know, one shell out just because the wear patterns are screwed up. This is the one that matched the uh, locker. I've moved my 71 ring gear over to it. Put some new bearings on there. Oh, let me give you a tip about bearings. When you take these off, you want to line up your, your, your C, uh, it's like, it looks like a C, it's a bearing, split bearing puller. Um, you want to line them up with this notch. There's one on each side. And that gives you a little bit of room to kind of get up underneath that bearing. Because you got to get up underneath this bearing race right up here. And this provides you just a little bit of room. Now you can see where my bearing puller is kind of smashed in right here because you got to tighten it down pretty good to get that sucker off there. And when it did and it drug up, it raised this portion right here. So I ended up taking my snap on die grinder and knocking off the top edge there so that wouldn't be sticking up proud. That's probably important because, as you can see, the split bearing puller did damage it just a little bit. I had that problem on both of these. On this one here, um, I took a file to it, and this one here I took my die grinder, so it doesn't really matter. You just want to knock this edge off right here and this edge right here. Uh, so long as, you know, with the rest is it's machined correctly, uh, it's going to locate the bearing all right, so don't worry about that. It's important to get that edge knocked off.